Uh, hey everyone, welcome to GGN. Uh, today is Wednesday, March 12th, 2014. We're slowly pushing towards spring here. Um, this video is going to be about uh, the economy, all about money. Money, 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 money. Uh, you'll hear words like uh, terrorism and terrorist and uh, neo-Nazis and all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, missile pads and NATO exercises, but it all comes down to money. And uh, this global system is all about money. Um, to be exact, it's about uh, lending money or you know creating credit and issuing debt. And it's a good way to control people, uh, control nations, and, and eventually control the entire planet. But until that happens, um, we still have uh, these nations who have their own central banks and even that I don't really agree with. I wish they'd just go smaller and smaller. I wish they didn't have banks. Uh, but this push towards this global system uh, takes out people, um, uh, countries like Libya and, and, and Iraq, um, some say Lebanon already, uh, their eye in uh, Africa, see what's happening in Ukraine, uh, but it's basically a lot of competition over who's going to get what pieces of the pie. Uh, there's still different factions in this uh, global government that don't necessarily agree with each other. So there's a lot going on right now, and on the surface it may seem very black and white, but I, and I don't know what exactly it is. I have my theories, but I don't think any of us, even you know, all the code truthers or alternative media, will ever really know what it's, what's going on behind the scenes. But there's definitely a power struggle. I had a sense of it just based off all the news cycles and that, that something was going on about a year ago, a little over a year ago, where Russia was supposed to, or so kind of having a, a transition of power, or quite possibly a designated planned shift of power uh, among these ruling families of the world. Um, I mentioned this before, about the Rothschilds supposedly giving up their position, uh, Stuart Swirlo calls it the Pindar, and um, they were supposed to give their reins up to the Romanov family. And um, maybe they don't want to do it, and uh, they're getting nasty about it. But uh, either way, it's a lot of smoke screens, and it could come to a head. Uh, so you see all this bad, and to, to to take it like to another level, you you could actually imagine. Well, there's probably some kind of entities that or people or groups that are actually controlling these families, right? And pitting countries or companies and families against each other, and just going to watch it all get uh, destroyed as they fight each other, right? create a nuclear holocaust, or whatever. If not, you know, fear creates a lot of uh, desire uh, to stimulate the economy, right, and capitalism. And so, global military spending is now an integral part of capitalism. And then we'll uh, start here where we left off as far as talking about energy and natural gas pipelines. Uh, we have fracking boom turns U.S. into bigger oil producer than Saudi Arabia. Um, we just covered an article. It's actually the event took place in 2011 about an earthquake that took place, the biggest in Oklahoma, um, biggest man-made earthquake. Well, at least that's what they say. They're not, I guess, they're not including um, Fukushima in that. But uh, it was due to fracking, actually, you know, gas drilling. The Independent reports on the U.S. oil boom. Unfortunately, it's come at the detriment of the environment. So. Yeah, so it goes in there and says what I said, but uh, but uh, basically it says last year U.S. production reached 7 million barrels a day, an increase of over 2012 of uh, 15%, a jump that hasn't been seen since 1951. So, And uh, this is from 2012, two years ago, U.S. to become biggest oil producer, and we're talking about Saudi Arabia no longer becoming or being uh, uh, relevant, right, to, to that part of the world as far as geopolitics go. The U.S. surpasses Russia as world's largest natural gas producer. They have uh, surpassed Russia. It says um, rose 3.7 percent. So Russia's output fell 12 percent. Okay, uh, moving on here uh, to the Ukraine. Uh, Alex Jones and Infowars are covering an article by Tony Cardellucci titled "Ukraine: How to Hide a Nazi Army," uh, basically saying that the West is being completely quiet uh, about uh, supporting. Um, Really, they're they're nationalists, is what they are. But uh, Infowars and these guys, they like to really push that word, because uh, most nationalists don't refer to themselves as Nazis. It's mostly a Jewish media that peddles that term because it builds fear.
The argument that they're trying to make, and this is something that I made in the last video, uh, which is these people are going to be taken for a ride, much like uh, Wall Street, um, Occupy Wall Street, all these people uh, will be used. Uh, just like even even the Sunni um, uh, extremists uh, or terrorists uh, in Syria that are being funded by the West, they'll be, they're will be they being taken for a ride too. They think they're going to get their own uh, Sunni salafate, but they won't. In this article, they say the pro-democracy, pro-European, as they put it in uh, uh, parentheses, uh, facade was propped up by literal Nazis who were armed and fully backed by the U.S. and without which the entire movement would have collapsed. So there you go. So these people will be thrown under the bus. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that I agree with big, hum, uh, huge authoritarian governments, but the globalists do not want any uh, peoples to assert um, any kind of decision-making power. So they're using them, and then they'll be done with them. And how are they going to do this? They're going to do it financially, right? Because you have to remember, they it's not so much about big wars and that's, you know, dropping bombs. That's why I don't think we're going to see that. Um, maybe we will. Maybe it will come to that. But it's all about using financial warfare against people and uh, to get regime change, uh, funding terrorist proxy forces to overthrow governments, uh, to lay natural gas pipelines like they're trying to do. Uh, Qatar is in the West and Israel. Uh, out there in Syria, uh, Ukraine also, like Georgia, uh, main corridor, um, a choke point for uh, natural gas and doorway to uh, Asia and all the corners of the world. Uh, but they'll do this by enslaving Ukraine uh, themselves, right? World Bank to lend Ukraine $3 billion. That's right. And we'll come back to this. So I want to tie this together. He writes at the end here, Tony Carlucci, it is truly dangerous at times when the Nazis are the heroes and those standing up against them are the villains. Um, so I, I don't really like this the way he put this because you have the Russian people, then you have the Russian oligarchs, um, then you have the Ukrainian uh, people, then you have Ukrainian oligarchs, you have the um, uh, United States, UK people, and then you have the oligarchs. Well, many of these oligarchs, uh, they do, they happen to be Jewish. Uh, the third largest, uh, richest person in Ukraine was actually uh, Jewish. He actually had a Ukrainian-Israeli uh, dual citizenship. So this is this is in Russia, this is in Ukraine, uh, this is in the EU, and um, so it just needs to be known. And as far as, as the word Nazi, uh, you know, uh, Israel wouldn't have been created if it wasn't for the help of, of England, if it wasn't for the help of, of these people, because they had the same uh, racial uh, ideas about things. So there's, there's two dichotomies to these people, um, uh, whether it's the leftist liberal Jews that can bash the state of Israel, while the other ones will so, uh, completely support it, and uh, but they'll stay quiet about you know the the kicking out Africans um, and all kinds of apartheid that they have uh, there in Israel. So it's a nice two-sided coin that they're able to play. All right, so I'm not sure how to um, how I'm going to say this, but I guess I'll just say it, and that is what's going to happen in Ukraine. Well, these people are being uh, called. Um, anti-Semites and all this stuff. Well, why would, if this is the case, why would Jewish oligarchs, a different maybe sect of Jewish oligarchs, say from maybe pro-Russia, whatever, oligarchs, why would they do business with these white nationalists that hate Jews? Well, because they deal with them. It's the same thing, uh, the same thing that uh, happened with Germany. There was like this, why some Jews fall alongside Hitler. Uh, they were in the armies and stuff like that, so they they have similar ideology to white nationalists and Europeans and all that, uh, but they but they do kind of uh, uh, they do kind of differ as far as uh, what they won't allow any of these these nation states or peoples to exist uh, without usury without them, unless they're enslaved to them, and that's a very uh, uh, important point to make. And someone wrote in a comment here in that article: Ukraine names oligarchs and gangsters as governors. It's the most indicative of the true character of the new regime and the naming of their new governors and head of major political divisions, including notorious billionaire gangsters. So, you know, why would they be going to the World Bank for loans? Ukraine looking for a $2 billion from, uh, loan from Russia. This is this uh, Yatsenyuk, whatever, uh, leader. So he could be, a, you know, a puppet, you know. It's very uh, possible. Russian-Ukrainian news site describes transfer of Ukrainian gold to the U.S. This is a Russian language and pro-Russian internet news organization in eastern Ukraine. It says a reporter Friday that Ukraine's gold reserves have been hastily airlifted to the United States. So, 
you know, a lot of this started and kicked off from them, supposedly, the pro-Russian government not wanting to join the EU. Ukraine and EU to sign a deal next week. The EU and Ukraine are going to sign their first part of the planned association agreement next week, says uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel of Germany. Uh, Crimea to nationalize Ukraine state companies. They're going to nationalize Ukrainian state companies on its territory, including offshore rigs. Uh, so, so you know, Russia, they're saying, oh, the nationalists have taken over the being back by the West. Um, the, Crimea is mostly Russian, almost 60 percent. So Russian oligarchs are making it seem like it's some kind of ethnic nationalist thing. Well, it has nothing to do with that. Uh, the West, they figure, well, they're going to take over Ukraine as, you know, a tax base and all that. And, uh, you know, to lend money to them, profit from them, they're going to, they want to get as much as they can. So it, it, that's all it has to do with how much how more people to make money off of instead of giving it to Russia, the Russian company. People themselves, what do they think? Um, well, they're not going to really have a say. Crimea declares independence, but a referendum will change that. They get to choose between returning to Ukraine or Russia. But nothing in between. And the region, uh, they haven't really ever had their independence for a long time, so uh, they don't even really know what to do with it. Uh, they said that they weren't too big on this uh, reaccession into Russia uh, until regime change in Kiev, which was probably pro-West. I think, you know, this is on Russia's doorstep. Like I mentioned about Syria, when they're done with Syria, they go to Africa and Russia's doorstep. And uh, so, I mean, this is literally on their doorstep. So uh, it could be a desperate a desperate measure by the West, um, or again, it could be part of some big uh, over overlying plan here. That's this is you know how it's supposed to be. Pro-Russian forces are squeezing links connecting Crimea to Ukraine, according to AFP. They're there to protect what they believe is now almost a Russian territory from the quote right-wing extremists who took power in Kiev last month. Uh, so the Western puppet government of Ukraine effectively is giving Crimea to Russia, saying we'll not intervene, intervene militarily. And that, you know, these young men, uh, groups of young men carrying large sacks of concealed weapons were probably, you know, uh, contracted out by the Russian oligarchs. Again, so you never actually see who's doing what behind the scenes here. But either way, you have the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff saying that the U.S. is ready for military response in Ukraine. So a lot of this may have to do with the referendum. If they go towards Russia, then they say that this will trigger, uh, this will trigger some kind of response by them. Again, this could just be a show, on the surface, so that they can just destroy the quote differences between the East and West and just blend it all into one uh, super uh, economic entity. So we'll continue to hear more of this stuff about, uh, you know, warmongering. Russian neighbor Belarus asked to host another 15 Russian fighter jets in response to NATO, or were they just basically bribed or blackmailed to do it? Uh, NATO holds invasion exercise in northern Norway. Not anything new. They've done this many times. In fact, the Russians have held similar exercises in that area, and they've actually held exercises uh, jointly together. So maybe this is all for the big show. A U.S. is hell-bent on crippling Russia's economy, says a report. So the West wants to put uh, sanctions against Russia. It's worried major American companies unwilling to lose business to competitors. So it's always about money. They actually annex if a Russian tri-killer goes up. This is a whole new ballgame, he says. So the Obama regime is actually saying that we can badly damage the Russian economy to punish Russia. Much like Iran, it will punish the Russian people, the Iranian people, to get their oligarchs to go along, which is what we saw in Iran, right? Uh, they're pretty much, they can't say they're anti-West Zionists, which they're not doing anymore, because they kind of sold out uh, for their economy. That's why oil is flowing now. And to Europe, right, sales of Iranian crude oil rose in January 2014, which is why the West doesn't really care about whether they have nuclear weapons or not. Russia to build two nuclear power plants in Iran after this deal that they're not going to go nuclear, because they just wanted the money. See what I'm saying? the Western European uh, oligarchs. They just wanted the money to fit quick, quick cash. Veteran nationalist MP of Russia says sanctions won't hurt them. Okay, and what's the question? Will they hurt Russia? Well, what's Russia? Is it a corporate entity? Is it the Russian people? What is it? Maybe this really is Western Zionism and Nazism versus communism in the East. Or maybe it's just what it is, which is economic authoritarianism, right? Where the people lose. Thank you.